So we've all heard that uh, it's sugar in the diet that creates um, fatty liver, right? That begins to trip off that whole argument that you see in the internet. And I actually hate to get into this debate because, um, <clears throat> again, a lot of heat, maybe not so much light. Uh, <clears throat> it, it reminds me of the argument about what is it that creates uh, fat in the, your artery walls? For, the, for decades, we've assumed that it was fat in our diet. That started with Ansel Keys. He created some science, which was supposed to indicate that. We've gone back. Uh, there's, I did a whole series on big fat lies. Um, and there have been several books written on it as well. Um, <clears throat> it's, the science is beginning to show that it's... Uh, more related to carbohydrate metabolism. It's uh, diabetes, and, and even more so those decades of prediabetes that creates uh, plaque in the arteries. Now we're starting to talk about fatty liver, <clears throat> and the same debates come up. It's like, okay, so um, is it fat in the diet, or uh, sugar in the diet, or something else that creates fatty liver? <clears throat> there has been significant evidence uh, indicating that it's sugar in the diet, but uh, not so clear. Uh, up until a few years ago, there was uh, basically some what we call cross-sectional studies or environmental studies where you take a large po population, ask them what they've been eating, and then do uh, look at their livers. Um, most of the time you're look, doing an M MRI of the liver to uh, assess body fat. These days, the past couple of years, we've, there's been development of a thing called fiber scan, which makes it easier to uh, and, and safer to, to look at liver uh, content, liver fat, but not during the times of those studies. It was in 2012 that a study came out where they actually began to develop evidence showing that it was the glucose or sugar sucrose carbohydrates in the diet increased fat in the liver um, <clears throat> they'd actually tried it before and didn't see changes here's one of the reasons that they didn't see changes uh, by adding that to the diet in the previous studies they had added it to people thin people thin uh, volunteers in this study, the average BMI was 30. And I went ahead and showed and basically wanted to print this out so you start to get an idea. So they're basically taking obese people and saying, okay, if we add simple carbohydrates to the, to the diet of obese people, what's the impact on their liver? This study was done. Um, <clears throat> and first of all, I'll show you how to find that study. Uh, back in 2012, the simple way to do it would be to go, to go to Google and type in PubMed. That's what this means, PubMed ID, 229 uh, 52180. <clears throat> and, and this uh, abstract oh, from PubMed will pop up. Another way to get it would be to um, type in MJ Clin, uh, any N-U-T-R, and you could type in the rest of that, or you could type in uh, American Journal of Clinical Nutrition 2012 and do some keywords out of here. Effect of uh, short-term carbohydrate and then liver, and uh, put in the first author's last name, Sevastiavona. Is that right? Yeah, Sevastianova. Now, <clears throat> this research, well, what will happen when you do that is this will pop up. And this is the full article from the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, you can type it out, or you can hit this area, uh, PDF. You can read it this way. There's a lot of other junk in there. Just hit PDF, and you'll get it in this format, which is very simple, easy to read, and I'm not going to go through this entire study because it gets into a lot of interesting things, including uh, OGTT. Um, it also talks about the, the way of estimating uh, uh, DNL or de novo lip lipogenesis. 
wait a minute, what's that? Uh, again, break it down, look at the Latin. It's not as difficult as it sounds. It's, um, um, <clears throat> de novo means new. Genesis is like the first book of the Bible, creation or new, or the beginning. And lipo is fat. So, uh, new development of fat. The whole point behind DNL, or de novo lipogenesis, is this whole thing of, it's the assumption that um, uh, carbohydrates are creating new fat development. It's that whole that debate about did it come from carbohydrates in the diet or fat in the diet? And if it came from fat in the diet, that's not new development of fats. Now, <clears throat> so after um, that little diversion, so it gets into de novo lipogenesis, which is part of the key um, debate here. Now, <clears throat> while you're there, actually you may want to look up why do sweet, uh, wh why do sweets fatten our livers? By uh, Lisa Hud Hudgens. This is in that same um, article, uh, the same edition of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. The reason this is interesting is it goes into a lot of the, uh, the importance of this study. It's an editorial on this study. Again, we'll cover it a little bit later. Uh, in, in a deeper, in more detail. But let me just cover a couple of key points right now because of the significance of, of these key points. Again, it was done in uh, Helsinki. This was the first prospective study that actually showed this. There were cross-sectional studies that had shown it before, but again, cross-sectional studies, asking people about their diet is notoriously bad in terms of results. Um, <clears throat> they took 16 subjects with a BMI of 30 or more, and um, 30 or more is the one that I showed here. It's the next to the heaviest. They fed them a thousand kilocalories a day of carbohydrates. Now, they didn't go too deep into describing exactly what those simple, car it was simple carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates were, but it was in the top 80% of the American diet, or the 80th percentile. So it's a lot of carbs and a significant amount of calories. What did they find at the, well, uh, let me, let me cover more about the study design. So they did that for three weeks, did the, uh, the assessments, um, the uh, before and after um, MRI, before and after uh, blood lipid studies, palmitate studies, um, <clears throat> some other studies which would help look at a couple of things. The weight of the patient, the weight and um, percent of fat in the liver, the development of lip of um, or lipogenesis, de novo lipogenesis, and it correlated all those three. Before, uh, after a thousand kilocalories per day for three weeks of simple carbohydrates, and after six months of um, decreasing the carbohydrates and decreasing calories and getting weight loss. What did they find? They found um, <clears throat> a 2% increase in their body fat or in their body weight after the three weeks. In addition, they found a 27% increase in liver fat. So pretty significant evidence, uh, pretty hard evidence that Adding carbs is going to create um, fatty liver. They also looked at, again, um, tr serum triglycerides, um, found hu huge increases in that, and uh, palmitates, about a 30% increase, indicating that this was de novo lipogenesis. In other words, the body was making fat as a result of uh, carbohy simple carbohydrate um, ingestion in the diet. So what else did they find? Uh, after six months, they did it uh, of 
carbohydrate restriction, they found that the livers had gone back, that uh, 27% had decreased. They dropped that fat back out of the liver. They'd also lost a couple of pounds, and they were not in a um, lipogenic phase anymore. This all makes sense if, if you... Uh, if you do what I do for a living, for example, looking at patients, looking for things like uh, diabetes, if a patient, if you look at a couple of other videos that I've done where I talk about a key ratio, um, serum triglycerides over HDL, um, if a patient has a, a large ratio there, two, three, or higher, that's a very strong indicator of diabetes and hyperinsulinemia. Now, how is that related here? Again, these are the same processes. It's where insulin is shutting down um, fat burning. There's also some indication, as you see here, that um, insulin or uh, carbohydrate ingestion is uh, creating de novo lipogenesis. <clears throat> so, um, I think that's about it that I want to cover for this today. I'll cover a, um, some other parts of it in uh, deeper detail later. Um, but I think it's, it's becoming really clear that, yes, fatty liver is very much associated with carb uh, ingestion as well. Thank you for your interest.